Hi everybody! In this video I will demonstrate how we can easily insert 3D models or complete 3D scenes into the environment of our 2D game in Godot 4. Let's see how this is done using the sub viewport node. In the past few weeks, we've been fully focused on completing the chapter number 4 of our game Whispers of Prague, which runs entirely on Godot 4. And, besides significantly advancing with the story and overall development, we have once again tried something new. This time it was a puzzle that the hero will encounter at a certain stage of the game. The puzzle is very similar to a combination lock and until the player sets the correct combination, they won't progress further in the game. So, since the solution requires moving the movable parts of the mechanism, we found it easier to manipulate the 3D model using spatial transformations and rotations, instead of doing the same thing in a 2D environment. Let's take a look at how it works directly in the game. So I will open the scene and here it is. If I click here... Okay, sorry, check subtitles, but I think it doesn't matter at uh, this video. So this is the model and if I click it is rotating in 3D and uh, everything looks pretty cool, I would say. So to avoid uh, spoiling the story, I won't show how the hero reveals the hidden compartment or what code needs to be set. What's essential is that upon clicking on the revealed lock right here, its enlarged version is displayed. That version is fully rendered in 3D and yet part of the 2D scene because, as we can see, the game responds to hotspots and display the, displays the corresponding arrows and tooltips. And when I click, the disk smoothly rotates, which is done using 3D rotation of the respective Mesh Instance 3D node. Notice that the scene reacts to the light source, which we can see in the dynamic shadows and the simulation of the bumpy surface of the disks using a normal map. In a moment, I will show in the Godot editor how all of this is created. Let me close the game and click OK. So we are back in the Godot editor and I have the scene open here. What we are interested in are these two nodes. Scroll down this uh, view panel and down there uh, sub viewport. As for the sub viewport, according to the documentation we know that it isolates a rectangular region of the scene to be displayed independently. However, to display something, we must either insert it into a sub-viewport container or assign it to a viewport texture. In our video, we will use the latter method. So I will click back to the Godot, here it is, and click the view panel again. So this is our custom class, view panel. As we can see in the inspector, this class extends the control node with some additional properties which are not important in this case. Nevertheless, it's a control node that has a green icon right here uh, in the node tree, which contrasts a bit with the blue icon of uh, this uh, sprite 2D node, which we use to display the content of the subviewport. Actually, there should be a texture rect, which works practically the same as Sprite 2D, but it also uh, it's also a control node. I'm not sure why we chose Sprite 2D. I think uh, there might have been a small issue with shaders or some kind of post-processing, but I can't uh, recall the details now. The important thing is that both texture rect and the Sprite 2D contain the texture property, which we can see here, where we set our sub-viewport as a viewport texture. If I expand that, this new viewport texture and then assign a sub-viewport node 
right here. Let me click the node. So now let's see how the content of this texture is created. I've clicked the subviewport node, which uh, shows a preview in the inspector of what will appear in the 2D scene. Let's see what this subviewport contains. I will click on the first Mesh Instance 3D right here and the 3D scene will open in the 3D editor. It might seem complicated at the first glance, but in reality, it is the simplest type of 3D scene where we have several 3D objects, one, two, three, four, light sources like directional light and omnilight, and a 3D camera. When I rotate the view of the 3D scene a bit, we can see that the resulting effect looks quite plastic, which we achieved through the light sources combined with the normal map on the surface of these disks. Let's take a closer look at it. In the inspector, we can see that the mesh property is actually a very simple model that we created in Blender. Uh, how do I rotate it? Ah, okay. Created in Blender. When I temporarily disable the material, it should be here in geometry and the color of the light property of the directional light, we can see that it's just a plain cylinder which uh, with an attached cube that has been enhanced with several additional faces and then replicated uh, to get 12 copies around the cylinder. So I will revert these two changes. Okay, so how did we achieve this nicely bumpy surface? As I hinted earlier, the trick lies in the normal map, which we generated using the noise texture. So when I click the material click again and material, uh, we it shows that there is a texture on it, which we can see in the albedo part. Here it is, texture. And uh, we created this texture to emphasize the edges and display to display a Roman numerals. But what is more important is the normal map. So this is here in the normal map section. And we can see that it's defined by a texture. When I click on it, it shows that it's using fast noise light right here in the noise section. Uh, specifically, specifically the cellular noise type. All of this is built directly into Godot, so we don't have to create anything like this manually. The essential part is that we set this noise texture, noise texture both as seamless, uh, here it is, here, here it is, and uh, as normal map. And we played around with the bump strength a bit to achieve exactly the bumpiness we wanted. Okay, I'll click back to the subview part node, and that's basically it. We have the scene ready, and when I click back to the subview part, which is what I just did, we see that two more things needed to be set: the size of the subview part and transparent background. Wait a minute. Ah, here it is, transparent background. If I uncheck this checkbox we can see in the preview that uh, the subviewport will display the entire scene as we see in this 3D editor, including the default ground, horizon, horizon and sky. But we only want the model. So let's click transparency back and we can see that the uh, background is again transparent. Okay, uh, as for rotating the disks, it's down with a script. Since the disk is essentially, um, sorry, this is not it, oh, once again, here, it's mesh instance 3D, we can directly set the internal rotation property right here, uh, which is defined for each node 3D. And to make this movement smooth, we use a function LARP angle, which performs linear interpolation between two angles. If you are interested in more details, please let me know in the comments 
and I will try to create a video dedicated to this topic in more detail. So once again, as a final summary, this is a 2D scene. Here we have the 3D scene and the 3D scene is defined as a node tree under the sub viewport node right here, to which we set the dimensions and the transparent background. Then we use the sub viewport as a viewport texture back here, uh, no, sorry, here, and the um, corresponding 2D node, texture act or sprite 2D. And here it is, done. By the way, if we wanted to insert the same 3D scene into multiple 2D scenes, it would be better to separate the sub viewport part into a separate scene to avoid unnecessary duplication of objects. The easiest way would be to right click this node and select save branch as scene. Thank you for watching. And if you learned something new about Kodo today, I'm very pleased. By the way, if you like the thunder and lightning effect that you could see during the demonstration of the scene in the chapel, perhaps that would be a good topic for some future video as well. For now, take care and see you again next time.